The main part of this lesson is going to be focused on the law of sines, but we're going to start off with a special formula that allows you to find the area of a triangle if you know two sides and the angle in between. If you know two sides and the angle in between, all we have to do is go one half, the one side, times the other side, times the sine of the angle in between. So we're going to go have an angle in between here. So we're going to go one half the one side times the other side times the sine of the angle in between. We're going to type this in, making sure our calculator is in the degree mode. And we're going to get this, and then we should include appropriate units of centimeters squared. Same idea for this one over here. We have an angle in between. We're asked to find area. So we'll go one half to one side times the other side times the sine of the angle in between. Type into our calculator to get appropriate answer. With our units, we had meters, so our area is meters squared. Now we're going to go ahead and start looking at the law of sines. Now, law of sines, you're dealing with angles, you need dealing with sides. Sides are always lowercase, angles are always capital. So we side A and angle A are always opposite of each other. Angle B and side B are always opposite of each other, and the same with the C's. Now, typically with the law of sines, you're, you can either deal with this, or you can deal with this one here. I like to use whichever one's going to have my unknown on top. But you can always just work with one or the other and use algebra to finish solving it. It doesn't really make a difference. When you're dealing with the law of sines, you would need to know three of these four things. So you'd need to know either two sides and one angle, or you'd have to know two angles and one side. But to use the law of sines, you need to have an opposite pair. So you need to know either both A's or both B's or both C's. If you don't have an opposite pair, you cannot use the law of sines. Now, there is one thing you have to be careful of. Law of sines normally works without any problems when you're dealing with all three sides, a side side or a side angle side where you have an angle in between two sides or a side in between two angles. Remember from geometry that they always form one triangle. But when you have a side side angle situation where your angle is not between two sides, then that does not form one triangle. And sometimes you don't have a triangle. Sometimes you have two triangles. Sometimes you have one triangle. Now, for the most part, if you have this side and this side and this is your angle, it could be that this side over here is too short to form a triangle. It just swings back and forth. It is possible that if you have this side, this side and your angle, that this opposite side is just long enough to come down and form a triangle, one triangle, and it's a right triangle. It is possible with your angle and your side and your other side. If this side's really, really long, longer than this one here, it only forms one triangle here going out to the right. But it is possible if you have your angle and your side and your other angle here, or other side here, sorry, that this triangle side could actually swing here and form a triangle, or it could swing back over here and form a bigger, wider triangle. Now, if you're dealing with an obtuse situation where your angle is obtuse, it's really pretty easy. The only way you can get a triangle is if this opposite side is longer than your adjacent side. Because if this opposite side of your angle is too short, it won't form a triangle. But if this opposite side here is longer than your adjacent side, then it will form one triangle. So when we're working out these problems that happen to be side-side angle, we're going to use this little sheet right here to be able to help us know how many it is. But we only do that if it's a side-side angle. If it's not a side-side angle and it's one of these three up here, we just go ahead and use law of signs and don't worry about all this mumbo-jumbo. So here we have a triangle. We have an angle, we have another angle, and we have a side. So I'm going to go ahead and, for the most part, draw a rough diagram to represent this. I have my obtuse angle, and I have this side opposite. 
and I have another angle I'm calling or which is B. So this is an angle, angle with another side. So angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side from geometry forms one triangle. So we don't have to be concerned about what we just talked about with multiple triangles. So we'll just go ahead and work this out. We can use law of sines because we have an opposite pair, and that's the A stuff. So we're going to take our side of A over the sine of angle A. Now we got to go a side over the sine of an angle. Well, I only know angle B. So I'm going to go and put angle B in the bottom. So I'm going to go to the sine of angle B. So that means I can find side B, which is opposite that, and that's going to go on top. Now I need to try to get B by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of B. This is my calculator ready form. I'll be looking for that, plus I type it in, I get my decimal approximation. Now we can go ahead and find angle C. We're given two sides, or two angles, so we can find our third angle. So I want to go ahead and, because all my angles add up to 180, subtract from 180, I get angle C to be 16. Now, I can use my given opposite pair in purple to help me find side C. So I'm going to go ahead, take my original A over the sine of angle A equals side C over the sine of angle C now all I have to do is solve it for C by multiplying by the sine of 16, get my calculator ready form, type it into my calculator to get my approximation. 